Hey everybody, Brad Knight here. We're at the first annual Brigadoon Riders Conference on my home lake, beautiful Watts Bar Lake. So we're gonna give you a quick tour and hopefully this is gonna demonstrate some places like if you're out of town and looking for a vacation place or you wanna come fish here on the Tennessee River, we're gonna kinda of go around in some of the places I've grown up fishing and caught them my whole life and, and some of the places to target, what you're looking for throughout the four uh, seasons. So uh, basically we're gonna to try to find and show off like springtime places, summertime places, fall and, and what have you. So without further ado, let's jump in and, and get a cruise on here on Watts Bar. All right, we've made it into one of my favorite creeks on the lake. This is White's Creek. And, and one of the reasons that it's so good is it just offers the exactly what you're looking for for all four seasons. You've got summertime drops out towards the river. You've got phenomenal spawning habitat back here in the back because now you're seeing grass. And Watts Bar is kind of going through an evolution. The last four or five years has really had a lot of grass come on. You can see right below me here in this hydrilla, this is very similar to what you see at Chickamauga or, or Gunnersville. And all throughout my life, I've never seen it with grass. So 20, 30 years ago, grass dominated again, then it went away and it's now it's making a comeback. So that evolution is changing. But the areas are still gonna be the same. You know, White's Creek's a really good area. Rockwood, you got all the rivers. And one really cool thing about Watts Bar from a fishing standpoint, whereas other uh, river lakes are really uh, segmented to be in really good and small sections, the whole deal with 90% of the fish live in 10% of the lake doesn't really apply to Watts Bar. And that's one thing to me is the crown jewels of the Tennessee River. No, it doesn't have the nine and the 10 and 11 pounders Chickamauga does, or the mega schools of 150 bass like Kentucky Lake did before the carp. But what it does have is the diversity from one end to the other is generally pretty good. Like you can win a tournament from one dam to the other any time of the year. And that's one thing that I think is, is really good about Watts Bar. It's not concentrating everybody up. You don't have to fish on top of everybody. It's a great tournament lake, it opens up. So, you know, it's also great if you wanna make a trip, you, know, you wanna bring your kids down on spring break and enjoy yourself. It's a great lake to do that as well. So here we are now in the later part of the summer, kind of getting that transition into the fall Normally I would be in the back of the creeks uh, trying to find some bass, chasing bait, trying to get on like a topwater deal in the morning. But now we have our grass, so it's gonna help that fishing out in the fall. It keeps the bass a lot more active. The uh, grass is, provides oxygen for the bait fish, gives them a place to survive, grow up and get big. And that's one thing that's really gonna make Watts Bar take off. This is gonna be a lake in the next five or six, seven years is gonna be really incredible. I'm excited about that. But you can come in and you can frog fish, you could punch. And that's one thing you know, is if we go from now until probably November, that's, that would be the tactics that you're wanna, gonna do. And it's got a huge population of fish. You're gonna be able to come down and get a lot of bites. And so you're not gonna have to really work too hard to, to get around them. So this is one area in the back of, the, uh, back of White's Creek, fall, a lot of grass mats around us. You can do that sort of deal as well. But one thing to keep in mind, if you're here in the springtime, these same areas are gonna be good with the grass below. All the bass that come from the creek or from the lake to the back of the creek to spawn are gonna use these same areas that you're catching them on a frog and flipping as they stage up to move it up and spawn. So it's just the transition to and from the back of the creeks here and mix that in with some ledge fishing in the summertime, which we'll go out and kind of do some graphing and, and talk about that as well. But again, for that late summer into the fall, you can see, you just use your eyes. It's grass, it's, it's punching, it's frogging. It's what everybody loves to do. You can do that here, as well as you can still find areas of the lake that doesn't have grass and find your more traditional schoolers in the back of the creeks with big stripers chasing bait mixed in with big large mouth. But one of the sleeper patterns that not a lot of people talk about on this lake is the smallmouth fishing gets really, really good again in that late fall. Once we get that cool down to where we can get that water in like the mid fifties, the top water and the, and the crankbait bite for a brown fish gets really, really good. And you can have a lot of fun doing that as well. So. Again, late summer grass, frogging, flipping. Now we're gonna talk about the next transition into kind of winter time and again into that early spring again. So once these fish gonna get to where the water starts getting drawn down for the winter and the lake starts cooling off, these fish kind of migrate back out into the lake and they get onto those structure places that the same places you fish in the summertime, they're just more suspended or out kind of chasing bait off of the structure because they wanna get high in the water column. They wanna float high because that's where the sun is the warmest water. So those fish just pull right back out and we'll go out, look at some of that stuff and, and do some graphing. But 
All right, so we're working our way back out of the creek. We were back there where we were talking about when bass move up to spawn around the spawning structure and also fall fishing around the grass. So now we're gonna talk about what everybody wants to know about on the Tennessee River, right? You come here, you wanna talk about ledge fishing in the summer. Well, what's bar is a little bit different than your traditional ledge fishing lakes like Kentucky Lake, Pickwick, even Kentucky, or Chickamauga, I'm sorry, that's one lake down. Those lakes are really flat and, and set up a lot shallower. They're a lot more broad and they don't have the deep stuff that Watts Bar kind of is. This lake is a lot more, um, where the top of our ledges are, are really about 35 to 40 feet deep. But you're kind of, as you elevate onto the river into the more mountainous region like Watts Bar is, everything's just a lot deeper and, and they don't set up the same. Uh, this lake has a lot more bars and humps and points that run out. So any kind, anytime you can find like a big hump uh, you just want to ride the edge of that break until you can find some type of turn or corner that it's going to make and that's where your bass are going to set up because at the end of the day it's all about current having those those bass ambush and sit behind the structure and wait on the food to get brought to them uh, when the summertime the air conditioners get cranked up and all the businesses are running to keep everybody nice and cool there's one reason that that's happening that's because they're turning them turbines in the dam to get the power going and that's creates the current so the more everything gets going, the more current gets around, the more the bass gets by. And the cool part about Watts Bar is they're not going to be finding these one spot mega schools. There's a lot more structure opportunities on a Watts Bar than a, a 12 or 15 mile ledge that's got three key sweet spots on it. And you can really diversify yourself on the lake versus a, a point or you might have a hump that's really good. So I guess a long story short is it's a lot easier to set up a place where you can hit 100 or 150 spots in a day and try to find them versus just having to sit and grind on one spot because that's uh that's the only place that's got them so the key part is is making sure you got your good unit here i run a lawrence hds 16 and a lot of guys prefer two units i, I like the single but it's to each their own it's just basically get you a good mat chip and get ready to put your butt in this seat and idle around a bunch and that's the that's the key there's no shortcut to this style of fishing it's all just Pretty much hard work and effort equals results when it comes to the ledge fishing for sure. So again, that's this is the summertime stuff. It's creek channel drops, main river drops, humps, points, anywhere you can find that current hidden, that's going to be your key. So when you come to Wasbar, just remember it's not the really shallow ledge stuff like you're used to seeing at Kentucky Lake and that type of deal. Just be a little more open-minded into the humps and the deeper turns and the corners, and I think you're going to have great results there on Wasbar. All right, so we made it back to Brigadoon. I hope you enjoyed your quick sample of what we saw of Watts Bar and all the things it has to offer. It's an amazing lake. It's one that's extremely special to me. And I hope you guys can come and visit and look for your next fishing trip or your next destination. Whether it's a fishing trip or you just want to come rent one of these lake houses and have a weekend getaway with your family or family reunion places, there's tons of things to do here in the area. It's a great place to come see. So again, we talked about all the four seasons of things to do. We saw the back of White's Creek for fall and spring. We saw some ledge fishing and some hump stuff for summertime. And then we kind of went over some of the banks that we saw. Um, clay bank transitions to pea gravel. We saw some trees to flip. We saw some rocky points, some, some rocky bluff things. So there's just a huge diverse amount of things to do here, styles of fishing wise. So however you like to do deep, shallow, grass, rocks, whatever, we offer it here on Watts Bar. Make sure you come check us out. We'll see you soon.